In this video, we take the whole family to the East Coast to try and make the most of a bumper autumn migration. Hi, okay, so I'm a little bit mental. I'm taking everybody in the car. Hello. Hello. <laughs> On a trip over to the East Coast. There's some birds over there and we thought, even though we've got the kids, we couldn't miss it. Maybe an olive back pipip, hopefully. Shrikes, who's to say? It's a very last minute thing, but... Yeah, we're rushing there now. We're <laughs> going to stay in a, like a static caravan type thing. I convinced them to stay two nights. Yeah, I can blame <laughs> Olivia for a bit of it as well. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. About three and a half hours later, we arrived in Yorkshire. Hey folks, <laughs> it's late. The kids are in bed, um, we're in like a static caravan that we got on Airbnb, if we can't afford. Um, but we're here, we're not that far from Bridlington um, on the East Coast again, but this is where the birds are. So uh, tomorrow we're going to go for some possibilities, really, 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 really hoping for olive backed pipit. And there's a Dorian or Isabeline shrike, maybe, nobody's kind of completely decided on what it is but it's a shrike we've not seen this year regardless so that could be good um maybe even a red flank blue tail yep. uh, which is one of the birds that i really really want to see myself and somebody's also seen a gray fowl rope so any of those birds one two all of them would be amazing anyway we're really tired mm. so <laughs> this was a bit of a kind of off the cuff crazy idea somebody had Yes, um, like the last time. Anyway, we'll see in the yeah dragon <laughs> the whole the whole plan with us as well. Uh, anyway, we'll see in the morning. Night night. Bye. When we woke up, it wasn't the usual mad rush. What's Kaylee cooking? Fry up. She's on the fry up, and there's lots of happy people eating lots fry of happy up. Customers. Yummy food. Yummy food. <laughs> then we're gonna go birding. With full tummies, we made our way to our first bird of the day that had been seen in Bridlington Harbour. We parked up and headed to where our target bird had been last sighted. En route, passing a lovely group of turnstone that didn't seem at all bothered by us wandering past, and very soon finding some other birders who'd spotted our target species, the grey phalarope. This tiny little wading bird was busily bobbing around picking off food from the surface of the sea. It got really quite close on some occasions, giving us awesome views. More about this fantastic species a little later in the video, but now it was time to move on. First bird got. <laughs> Gra yeah, Grey phalarope in, in Bridlington Harbour. It was shown quite nice, a bit shaded by the harbour wall and the sea. Looking through the camera made me a bit seasick because it was <laughs> moving a bit, but excellent little bird to start the day and bird 248. Not bad. We're going to go now to Bempton Cliffs and hopefully it's for an shrike. Isabeline Shrike, which will be a life for everybody. Fingers, Fingers crossed. Stick with us, guys. Our next port of call was Bempton Cliffs RSPB. We'd only been here last week to get a very rare pale legged leaf warbler but now it was another mad rush. Hey folks, we are at Bempton Cliffs, like racing towards where this Isabeline Shrike is. We can see a lot of people in front of us. Uh, hopefully they can see it. Um, Kaylee and Emily are in front of me, the other two are behind me. Let's see if we can find it. We headed towards all the other birders that were stood in front of a hedge. Kaylee was excited because the bird we were looking for was in her favorite family of birds, the Shrikes. And this bird in question was thought to be a young Isabeline Shrike. And luckily, for everyone present, this bird was showing excellently, initially perching right on the front of a bush. This bird breeds between the Caspian Sea and central China, and winters in Africa and Arabia. So quite a bird to see at such close range on the east coast of the UK. The Isabeline Shrike and the Red-tailed Shrike used to be clumped in the same species, but now they've been separated, which is great because we saw the red-tailed trike here a couple of years previous. So that makes this one a lifer. 
After a short while it flew out of sight and then reappeared on the top of the bush at the back. Before leaving we had a quick peer over the cliff's edge, see if there were any gannets around and there were but they were flying at some distance. We got it. We got it. Yay. And it was amazing. Absolutely and unbelievable. Cute. Really cute. It was so cute. It was absolutely stunning. Cute. Everyone saw it. You, did. A... you saw it, didn't you? It was really good. <laughs> On to the next. We left Bempton and took a quick trip round towards South Landing, where there had been a report of a bird I really want to see the red flanked blue tail. We had hoped for the olive-backed pipit to show up that had been seen a couple of days before, but it didn't. Hey folks, we've come to South Landing in Flamborough, which is not far from where we've just been at Bempton, um, <laughs> because a red-flanked blue tail had been seen here this morning. Um, as we were about to walk down, we bumped into a couple of people said, saying that it hadn't been seen for, geez, two, two and a half hours, and a few people coming back saying, they hadn't seen it and a couple of people who had seen it it had been really kind of yeah, fleeting right. glimpses and quite a walk so with little legs with us we decided not to do that so we're going to head down south towards our favorite place spurn <laughs> uh, yeah they like spurn <laughs> um to see what's there see if we can get the arctic warbler again maybe a barred warbler and even this morning there was a dusky warbler ring so fingers crossed on route to Spurn, we made one stop very nearby. Hi folks, we're at Easington, not far from Spurn. Um, there's been a barred warbler seen here the last few days. It's only seemed to have been reported once a day. I'm not sure if that's because it's elusive or people have just not reported it or seen it. Who's to say? Anyway, this would, hopefully, if we can find it, be our 250th bird. So um, as soon as the girls have had their lunch, they're eating in the car at the moment, they're going to join me and we'll see if we can find this little warbler. We walked up and down this hedgerow for a short time. I thought I may have heard a barred warbler, but I certainly didn't see one. During this time though, another barred warbler had been reported a few minutes down the road and it didn't take us long to find out where it was. We just looked out for other birders. Lucky for us, this individual was uncharacteristically showy this species sometimes keeps itself low in vegetation, so it was lovely to see this one clearly, although sometimes briefly. What next? Hey folks, we're at Kilnsea Wetlands now, it's a bit breezy. Um, everyone's with us, folk waving in the background. Uh, we've just gone to see, we've just gone to see uh, a barred warbler. As, um, we've just gone to see a barred warbler that was just on the straight running up to Spurn which showed briefly but very nicely. Oh, it was really cute though. And uh, now we're gone we've gone to uh Kilnsea Wetlands to try and find a little stint which would be bird 251. Well this is going well isn't it? <laughs> Stick with us. The little stint we were looking for had been sighted on the Beacon Ponds area of this reserve. You may have seen it a few times in previous videos. We headed along the path onto the ridge that looked over Beacon Ponds, passing this lovely Pied Wagtail en route. When we arrived, there were quite a few other waders there, including Blacktail Godwits, and also plenty of ring plovers, but currently no sign of the little stint. We passed the binoculars around, everyone had a bit of a look, but still no sighting. In the far distance there was a group of ducks, and amongst these was an American Widgeon. This bird was here when we did our last video, and this time it was even further away. Birds that weren't at such a distance included a little egret and also more than one little grebe that were fishing near the bank. We also noticed this ringed plover that was itself colour ringed. You can see the red ring on one leg and a little yellow flag on the other. One of the other birders did report this. Looking on the other side of the bank towards the wetlands itself, we did notice this gull which we think may be a Caspian gull. Thoughts anyone? And also this silhouetted duck that's feeding is a Gargani. This species isn't particularly common so it's really nice to see it. Unfortunately though, the little stint didn't show, so we didn't get our 251st bird. Before we left for the evening I did want to go and have one more look at that nearby barred warbler. 
This species breed in Central and Eastern Europe and generally winter in Eastern Africa, but often do show up in small numbers during migration, this being the second one of this species we've seen. Hey folks, so unfortunately no little stent. Um, we went to have a look uh, up near Beacon Ponds and unfortunately it was no longer there or even on the, the wetland part. We did see a gargani and also there was an American widgeon there but it was at pretty serious distance. So we spent a long time there, mostly because we were chatting to some of our subscribers who were really nice to meet. Um, we're gonna head back now and have dinner and resume uh, and do a little bit more in the morning. We've not had a bad day though, because we've but picked up uh, we've picked up three birds today, haven't we? And uh, we managed to hit our 250. 251, aren't we? No, the little stint would have been 251. So we did hit 250, and that was a barred warbler. Can we one more? Do you want one more? more? We'll try and get one more tomorrow for you. Stick with us, we'll see you tomorrow. After this really good day, we had a meal and settled for the night. We woke up to a reasonably overcast morning, and as nothing new had been sighted nearby, we loaded everything into the car and headed back to Bridlington Harbour. I thought it would be nice to try and get another sighting of the lovely grey phalarope we'd seen the previous day, but this time, when we got to the harbour, it was really windy and quite choppy in the harbour. But apparently, this didn't bother our phalarope. Another bird had pointed out that it was right in the harbour mouth, and when we found it, it was getting bounced around by the waves and blown around by the wind. You can see in this video how small it is compared to the black-headed gull. After getting some footage, I headed back around the harbour wall before finding the phalarope had moved right in front of me. I was looking right down on top of it. This species is an arctic breeder and is only usually seen in the UK during migration. And although we call it the grey phalarope, in America they call it the red phalarope due to its bright breeding plumage. Our next stop was South Landing. We're at South Landing! <laughs> Very windy! Whilst we were at Bridlington Harbour, we bumped into some of our subscribers, which not only were lovely to speak to, they also gave us a heads up on where we may find a little stint. And as we failed to find the one at Kilnsey Wetlands the previous evening, we were eager to try our luck. When we got to the shore, there were a few birds present, the obvious ones being groups of gulls and a few oyster catchers, of which there were plenty, some feeding, preening, and some having a bath like this one. We did spot a curly wandering down the beach, and this fantastic bar-tailed godwit that seems to have caught itself what appears to be a lugworm. We had been told that the little stint was hanging round with some dunlin, which we couldn't find. There didn't appear to be any small waders. We watched the RNLI do their training, before standing for a moment to watch this lovely rock pipit feeding on the cliff face. But unfortunately, still no little stint. And as we only had about an hour or so left before we had to head back home, we headed back up the steep hill and then towards Flamborough Head. Although nothing had been reported here today, often rarities do show up here, so it was worth a try. By now the wind had really picked up, which made birding a little bit more difficult. Hey folks, it's very windy. Uh, we're at Flamborough Lighthouse now. Um, yesterday there was a marsh warbler here, but nothing has been reported here this morning. But we've come as a last ditch attempt before we've got to go home. Stick with us, let's see what we do find. We did see small flocks of linnet, and as we walked up round the path and then down to the cliff's edge, we did spot this kestrel, which was really impressively keeping very still despite the high winds. Occasionally dropping down, presumably to try and catch some prey. Looking over the cliff's edge, there were groups of seal, some lazing round on the rocks, and some in the water having a bit of a play in the swell. As the wind picked up even more, the kestrel seemed to be having more of a hard time, as I had a really hard time trying to get any still footage of it. By now, it was nearly time to go home, so we walked round the path back towards the lighthouse, en route seeing this lovely family of stone chat, there appeared to be about four of them present. They were flitting around in the low vegetation, occasionally coming to land on the grass path to pick up food. Unfortunately though, although it had been a great weekend, we did have to head home. 
Hey folks, we came to Flamborough Head. We did. We came to the lighthouse, <laughs> hoping that we might get our fourth bird for the weekend. Unfortunately, it's blowing an absolute gale. Yeah. Um, we did see a kestrel and some stone chat and some linnets and such, but nothing new. And unfortunately, it's time to head back <laughs> because some people in the back have got school tomorrow. Hello. And <laughs> I've got work tomorrow. Uh, and yeah, so we've got to go. What a weekend it's been, though. It's been Mental. completely off the cuff. We weren't going to do it, and then we did. And it was worth it because we got three excellent new birds, including a lifer. So that is absolutely stunning. And now we're at 250. So what next? Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? 260. Maybe. Tell or <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please like. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. What hey. she said. Yeah. See you next time. When we were about halfway home, somebody reported the olive-backed pipit that we really wanted. Gutted. That's birding for you.